Broadway followed the old stake road built by Joe Jackson to Grice. The school built in 1902 and opened in September of 1902 stands at the intersection of Broadway and Pages Mill Road. Some of the students in this picture have been identified. The girl on the left back row is Merle Penn. The sixth girl from the left is Ida Burns. Next to her is Glenn Stroll. The boy on the right back row is Will Bullard. The first girl on the left second row is Leotha Bonner. Merle Penn became an important teacher in the Chabron school system. Glenn Stroll became a successful dairy farmer. And Will Bullard became a farmer and a businessman and at one time was part owner of the Bullard Mercer Funeral Home in Chadburn. This is the Broadway School Building in 1980. It was last used as the residence of Ms. Bessie Page. This was Chadburn's second school building north of the railroad and built about 1904. It was an eight-room building. It was Chadburn's first accredited high school. Ms. Nanny Leach was the professor. Claire Bailey and Alice Toon were the first high school graduates in 1910. This building burned in 1911. The Burn School was replaced by a brick building about 1912 and served into the 1920s. Beginning about 1922, the small rural schools began to be consolidated into the Chadburn School. This school was located on Pine Street on the present Chadburn Primary School ground. This school was built in the early 1920s, prior to 1924. It had, in addition to the classrooms, a library and auditorium. It was demolished in 1975. It was located at 3rd Avenue and Pine Street. This was the building used by Southeastern Community College until the buildings at the college were ready for students. The present primary school was built in 1972 and named in honor of E. L. Derrick Sr., who served as principal of Chevron High School from 1927 to 1943. Another interesting note is Mr. F. T. Wooten, a resident of Chadburn, was county superintendent for 20 years and was named the father of education for Columbus County. The Brown Hotel was built early in the century. The building on the left is the Brown Hotel. It stood on the west corner of Railroad Avenue and Wilson Street. Ms. Nell Wilson said her family moved to Chadburn January the 19th, 1919. Because no houses were available, they came to the Brown Hotel. Soon, Ms. Wilson was managing the hotel. One year after their arrival, the hotel burned on an early Sunday morning. It was Mr. Brown's decree that water in the hotel be cut off at 11.45 every night. A bell was sounded 
five minutes prior to the water cutoff, and you could hear the scuffle that ensured during that five minute period. On that Sunday morning, since water had not been restored to the hotel, there was no water available to fight the fire. However, everything in the hotel was saved. Even the plumbing fixtures, which were ripped from the walls and thrown from the windows. The small building between the cracks is a railroad maintenance shed. In the background is the strawberry auction shed and the plate ice company. This is East Railroad Avenue after 1920. The tall brick building in the center of the picture is the Brit Hardware Building, built in 1911 by Mr. Elijah Britt. The two buildings adjacent on the left are buildings built at the same time by Mr. Britt. Upstairs in the Britt Building was the dental office of Dr. J.B. Barden. Barden. The roof line visible next to the Brit Hardware on the right is the barracks. This was a temporary building built after the Brown Hotel burned. It was a long building with rooms on each side of a hallway to house the influx of people during the strawberry and tobacco seasons. The dining room used for the barracks was in a store building midway of the block on East Railroad Avenue. The building on the right in the background is the Brown Mercantile Company. Miss Caroline Yates and her companions stand in a tobacco field, not dressed to harvest the crop. The first tobacco grown in the county was 1895 and 1896. The first tobacco auction house was located in Fair Bluff. Chadron farmers began to diversify after 1900. About 1911, Myers and Watson established the first tobacco warehouse in Chadburn. About 1918, the Graham was built and operated by Graham and Son. Clark and Graves later operated this house. About 1920, the brick warehouse was built. It burned in the late 1930s and was replaced by another brick warehouse and operated by Phoenix and Miffin. Around 1918, Sam Carter built and operated a warehouse in Chadburn that covered almost the whole block. Other tobacco warehouse men in recent years have been Jimmy Green, the Garretts, the Coxes, Williams and Stevens, Taylor and Thompson. Many events took place in the grove. This was the area behind the Legion Hut. Bands performed here, public speaking events, and rallies of various kinds were held here. On November the 8th, 1911, the Columbus County Educational and Farmers Union Rally was held here. The attendance was five to six thousand. Two special trains brought people to the rally. By actual count, one thousand and five school children participated in a parade. The Vineland Coronet Band, under the direction of Professor Arthur Whitley, performed. Master of Ceremonies for the event was D.F. Stroll president of the Columbus Farmers Union 
Outstanding in the parade was Usher Brothers' corn spreader and gasoline engine. Speeches were held by State Farmer Union President and former State Senator Joseph A. Brown. The inspector of the State High School from Chapel Hill presented Mr. F. T. Wooten a $20 gold piece a gift from the teachers and students of Columbus County in appreciation for his services to the schools. A picnic dinner was spread at noon. This is a view of the depot area of Chadburn. This is the west end of Railroad Avenue. On the left is an early depot. This depot was built in 1905. The large building facing the railroad is the residence of Armelin Huffam. This is a girlhood home of Bertha Van Landingham. The house in the background is the Strickland residence and still stands in a thicket behind the stores that have been built since. The train in the foreground is on the Elrod Conway Railroad track. The water tank is the Atlantic Coastline tank. Chadron was a rail junction and because of this enjoyed some special events. In the years prior to 1920, and for several years, Ringling Brothers and Barnum and Bailey Circus made one night stands in Chadburn. Their tents were set up in the area where G.T. Bullard's store is now. This was a unique event for a town of approximately 1,500. The home on the left was built by Mr. Scottney. The house was remodeled by Mr. E. L. Derrick, Sr. and used as his residence for many years. One resident said Mr. Scottney owned one of the first automobiles in Chadburn. The house on the left background is possibly Dr. W. F. Smith's first house. The house on the right foreground is the Willis House. Ms. B. S. Kuntz also lived here and kept a boarding house. Teachers stayed here. Today it is the residence of Horace Bullock. This experiment station was established in 1920. Mr. W. A. Thomas was in charge. This agency was established for the control of the strawberry root weevil and the red spider that threatened the strawberry industry. Located on old 7476 Highway east of Chadburn, it was later converted to the residence of Tommy Wooten. This is the Brown Hotel as many of us remember it. The temporary barracks that was built after the original Brown Hotel burned also burned. During the Depression years, the Brown Mercantile Company failed. The Brown Mercantile Building was remodeled into this hotel. The Wilson family continued to operate the hotel and many people referred to it as the Wilson Hotel. For many years, the bus station was located in this building. In late 1953 or early 1954, the building was sold in three sections. The kitchen section is now used as a pack house on the farm of Mr. and Ms. Elwyn Harris. Mr. Muldrow moved the small building on the right to the Smith to Smith Street. The dining room part was made into a dwelling and is now on South Wilson Street owned by Clarence Stevens. 
Klondike Post 139 of the American Legion was organized about 1928 with John V. Stroll as commander. He served with the exception of one year as commander until